The youngest child of Mohammad Reza Shah and Farah Pahlavi, the last empress of Iran, was named Layla Pahlavi. Despite being the beloved youngest daughter in the family, Layla's life took a tragic turn, as she was the first among her siblings to pass away. At the young age of 31, Layla died alone in a hotel room in London, surrounded by empty bottles of sleeping pills, earning her the title of a tragic princess. Today, I will narrate the story of Layla Pulavi, who was born on March 27, 1970, in a military hospital in Tehran, where the hospital was promptly renamed in her honor. Before her birth, her mother had already given birth to two sons and a daughter for the Shah. With Layla's arrival, the Shah no longer had to worry about the lack of a male heir, and the birth of their little daughter brought additional joy to the family. Farah Pulavi, her young mother, was determined to provide Layla with as normal a childhood as possible. However, reality often deviates from ideal circumstances. Three years before Layla's birth, Farah Pulavi was officially crowned Empress of Iran by the Shah. Unprecedentedly, the Shah also stipulated that if he were to pass away or become incapacitated before their crown prince's 21st birthday, Farah would assume the role of regent. As a result, Farah became more actively involved in public affairs, particularly focusing on women's rights and cultural development in an Islamic country. This dedication to her responsibilities kept her remarkably occupied, with work hours lasting from around 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., leaving her with limited time to spend with her children. Nonetheless, both Farah and the Shah made every effort to find time to visit and engage with their children. Layla and her siblings would always see their parents in the morning, and the Shah would often personally pick Layla up from school. Amidst their busy lives, the young princess Layla and her siblings lived a tranquil existence in the palace located in northern Tehran, surrounded by loyal servants and the comforts of royalty. The Iranian people held deep affection and curiosity for Layla and her older brother Ali Reza, similar to how the public adored seeing photos of William and Harry during their childhood. When the time came for Layla to attend kindergarten, the Iranian court arranged a special class for her, with some children from the friends of the Shah and Iranian nobility becoming her classmates. Some of these children would become lifelong friends. As per recollections from her friends, Layla proved to be a daring and spirited child, akin to a tomboy. She excelled in swimming, horseback riding, and cycling. Layla shared a unique bond with her father, the Shah, who cherished her deeply. She had the privilege of entering his office any time and sitting on his lap, even during meetings with foreign dignitaries. In her interviews as an adult, Layla fondly recalled these moments, stating that even at the tender age of three, her father would hold her hand and take her with him, even if he was in the midst of an important meeting. Layla's emotional dependence on her father remained strong, and their father-daughter relationship remained very close. However, the nation's joyous times were soon overshadowed by challenging circumstances. As the economic conditions deteriorated and political unrest escalated in Iran from the mid-1970s, the seeds of revolution were sown. A significant catalyst for the revolutionary movement was the tragic Cinema Rex fire incident in August 1978, sparking large-scale strikes and demonstrations that engulfed the country, bringing it to a standstill for the rest of the year. By the end of 1978, as the situation in Iran became increasingly volatile, the Shah and Farah made the difficult decision to send their two eldest children, Reza and Farinaz, abroad for their safety. Meanwhile, the rest of the family sought refuge in the Niveran Palace located in northern Tehran. Layla and her brother, Ali Reza, often heard angry crowds outside, shouting death to the Shah, as the country was gripped by riots and protests. The situation reached its peak in January 1979, triggered by violent demonstrations on January 16th of that year. Amidst the escalating turmoil and the Shah's ongoing battle with severe lymphoma, he and Farah departed Iran by plane, seeking sanctuary in Egypt. Layla, accompanied by her grandmother, boarded a separate plane bound for a United States Air Force base in Texas, where her older brother, Reza Pahlavi, was undergoing pilot training. These three months were nothing short of a nightmare for the entire family, as they faced constant danger with Ayatollah Khomeini sending assassins to pursue them relentlessly. For safety reasons, the family had to separate, reunite, and separate again during their exile. The Shah and Farah traveled to various locations, including the Bahamas, Morocco, and Mexico, before finally settling in Egypt. 
The journey was fraught with uncertainty and fear as they tried to navigate the complexities of exile while facing persistent threats to their lives. During this tumultuous period, the Shah's health continued to decline, leaving him weaker day by day. The children, staying in the United States, seized every opportunity to visit their parents, sometimes having to hurriedly flee to another country in the middle of the night due to safety concerns. There were instances when Layla and her siblings were still asleep, completely unaware of their parents' sudden departure. Upon waking up to find her parents absent, 10-year-old Layla felt overwhelming anxiety and panic. While the family remained separated, Farah made nightly phone calls to check on her children. During these calls, Layla would cry and scream, desperately asking her mother about their whereabouts and her father's health. The long-distance communication brought distressing reports about her father's deteriorating health, deeply affecting the young princess and causing severe psychological trauma. In March 1980, President Sadat extended an invitation, finally reuniting the family in Egypt. However, the happiness was short-lived, as only months later, the Shah passed away at the age of 60 due to his illness. Sadly, before his final moments, Layla was separated from her father and sent to Alexandria, missing the chance to see him one last time. Her two brothers, Reza and Ali Reza, were with their father in Cairo during his final moments. The loss of her father deeply impacted Layla, and the pain of being away from him during his last days left a lasting mark on her young heart. At the funeral of the Shah, Layla wore a serene white dress, as recalled by a close friend who attended the somber event. Despite the surrounding noise and commotion, Layla appeared remarkably calm, almost as if she were in a state of unreal tranquility. However, the pain of exile and the loss of her father at a young age were inescapable burdens for her to bear. Losing her country and her beloved father was a profound and difficult experience for Layla. In a later interview, she expressed, My father was the love of my life, and my last memories of my father are very painful. When I learned that my father's life was coming to an end, they wouldn't let me into his room to be with him, and for a long time, I felt that my absence betrayed my father. Following the Shah's death, the entire family received an invitation from U.S. President Ronald Reagan and chose to relocate to the United States. Initially, they settled in Williamstown, Massachusetts, close to Williams College, where Crown Prince Reza was studying. Layla also attended a nearby private school called Mount Greylock Regional School, where she was well-liked by her classmates. Later, the family moved to Greenwich. In 1984, Layla attended the United Nations International School in New York for a period and then graduated from My Country Day School in 1988. Subsequently, she pursued studies in literature and philosophy at Brown University. Reports state that she graduated in 1992, however, there are also accounts suggesting that she left university before completing her degree due to health issues. Layla's life journey after her father's passing was marked by challenges, but she persevered in her academic pursuits amidst the difficulties she faced. Around the time Layla was in her university years as an adult, she began experiencing stomach discomfort, which she would express to those around her. Her mother, Farah, mentioned that Layla had exhibited signs of fatigue during this period. Layla is multilingual, fluent in English, French, and her native Persian language, and she has also learned some Italian and Spanish. Friends describe her as a wonderful and kind-hearted person, possessing rare innocence and a heart of gold in today's world. However, she tends to be introverted and not very talkative. Despite the family's loss of much of their wealth, Layla, her mother, and her three siblings remain reasonably affluent. The Shah had deposited substantial sums, potentially over $100 million, in foreign banks before his overthrow. Layla has not pursued a job, and even if she desired to work, being a princess, it would not have been easy for her to do so. In the following years, Layla spent significant time assisting her brother in managing the Mir Foundation, an organization dedicated to fostering cultural connections between Iran and the West. She frequently traveled around the world, residing in California and Asia, occasionally skiing in Switzerland, and frequently visiting Paris to be with her mother and grandmother. Layla also took an interest in Persian antiquities, often visiting the Persian Antiquities Gallery at the Louvre. Occasionally, Layla accepts interviews from gossip magazines, allowing a glimpse into her life and experiences. Despite the challenges and changes her family faced, Layla has sought a cautious and peaceful existence. Finding purpose in contributing to cultural initiatives and cherishing precious moments with her loved ones. 
During her interviews, Layla often expresses a deep connection and admiration for her mother, Farah. She fondly recalls her homeland, Iran, and cherishes memories of family vacations on Kish Island in the Persian Gulf and the beauty of the Rose Gardens in Shiraz. Layla also speaks about her late father, acknowledging him as a good person who prioritized the country's best interests but may have been influenced and misled by advisors. Layla enjoys watching football matches and has a genuine interest in meeting people from diverse backgrounds and professions. She is known to smoke mild-flavored Marlboro cigarettes and occasionally drink alcohol in moderation. However, despite her interests and interactions, she often experiences episodes of extreme depression. Layla once described herself as feeling like a soul without a country, indicating a sense of displacement and longing. The princess began experiencing challenges in her 20s, such as being underweight and struggling with various eating disorders and depression. She openly confided in friends about physical discomforts, including headaches, muscle and joint pain, and chronic fatigue. Despite attending a ceremony in Cairo commemorating the 20th anniversary of her father's death, Layla appeared very thin, yet paradoxically complained about feeling overweight to her close companions. It is evident that Layla carries a heavy emotional burden due to the loss of her homeland, the changes in her family's circumstances, and the impact of her father's death. These experiences have left her with deep emotional scars and struggles that she openly shares with those close to her. Layla expressed her concerns to her friends, mentioning that she felt she had gained weight and referred to herself as feeling like a pig due to this change. Later, she embarked on a modeling career in Paris, working for Valentino, and during an interview with a French magazine, she shared her thoughts on her father's death and its impact on her life. Despite the challenges she faced, Layla emphasized the importance of continuing to live and maintain a positive outlook. She described herself as an open, tolerant, and passionate individual, yet also strict about certain principles and values, such as keeping her word and being punctual. Layla's royal title was disregarded by Americans, which she mentioned did not bother her. She attributed this change in perspective to the experiences she and her family had been through, causing formalities to become less significant. Layla missed Iran deeply and held on to hope for the day when her family would be allowed to return. However, she also appreciated the anonymity she had in the United States, where she could go anywhere without being recognized. It is believed that Layla once had a serious relationship with a man, but it ended on a sour note. She encountered difficulties in establishing interpersonal connections and occasionally questioned whether people approached her solely because she was the Shah's daughter. These emotional challenges eventually led Layla to seek help, and she checked into the Priory Hospital, a prominent rehabilitation clinic specializing in mental health issues. Despite the ups and downs in her life, Layla continued to demonstrate resilience and a desire to find happiness and fulfillment amidst the complexities of her experiences as a princess living in exile. The promising and positive life that Layla seemed ready to embrace came to a tragic end all too soon. Despite a friend of her mother's offering financial support for her ventures, Layla's life took a devastating turn. Just three months after discussing her plans and aspirations, Layla was discovered deceased on June 10th, 2001, at the Leonard Hotel in London. Her doctor found her lifeless body in the room. An investigation revealed that Layla had over five times the lethal dose of sedatives in her system, along with a non-lethal amount of cocaine. Her body was extremely frail and emaciated, a result of years of battling anorexia and food intolerance. The princess bedroom held a shocking array of drugs, including 16 different medications, 96 calcium pills, 40 rohypnol tablets, and 103 seconal pills. A small amount of cocaine was also found. No notes were left behind by Layla, only a piece of paper with some hastily written verses without any specified date. The circumstances surrounding her passing raised deep concerns about her well-being and the emotional struggles she endured throughout her life. Layla's untimely death brought immense sorrow to her loved ones and those who had hoped for a brighter future for the princess. The tragedy of Layla Pulavi's life came to light with the discovery of a photograph showing her with her parents, Shah and Farah, and her siblings in their palace in Tehran. The image captured a moment of happiness and togetherness, with Layla sitting on her father's lap. However, beneath the surface, Layla struggled with addiction and a deep emotional pain that plagued her life. According to a death report, Layla had stolen a lethal amount of sedatives from the doctor's desk during a visit on June 6th. 
She had developed an addiction to this medication, consuming an excessive number of pills at a time, far beyond the prescribed limit of two pills. Layla's burial took place on June 17, 2001, in the Parsi Cemetery in Paris, France, where she was laid to rest alongside her grandmother. The funeral was attended by members of the Iranian royal family, former members of the French royal family, and notable figures, including Frederick Mitterrand the nephew of the late French president, Francois Mitterrand. Friends of Layla expressed hope that in her passing, she had found the peace that seemed to elude her during her lifetime. Despite her youth, beauty, and wealth, Layla's life was filled with inner struggles, pain, and fear. Her tragic story serves as a reminder that we can never truly understand the depths of someone else's suffering. May this beautiful princess find eternal peace and rest. کنار آرزوی هم اینه که روزی به خودش و پدرش که به امانات سپرده شدن اینجا در خاک پاک ایران باشن خدا حافظ و نگهبان تمام جوانان ایرانی باشه اون چیزی است که من از خدا برای همه شما میخوام خدا بهتون قدرت رو صبر بده سپاس گذارم این گل رو میخواستم از طرف لیلا برای تمام جوان هایی که در ایران عمر خودشون رو از دست دادن اونهایی که شاید قبلشون نامونشان هم نداره این از طرف لیلا برای همشتونه 